Hello everyone. Hello, how are you? I don't know why my game capture thing isn't working. Why ain't you working? There it is. <laughs> now it's there. <laughs> I hope everyone's doing well. Again, as per usual, I have tea. I might be a bit close to my mic. Excuse me, mic. Your mic. Mm. Tea. Nom nom nom. And I have biscuits too. Lucky. Lucky me. Okay, we are continuing with the grand adventures of Sarah Crew because, of course, we are. Because Sarah Crew is amazing. Do 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 do. And uh, we need that drama in our lives. Like, it's just so entertaining, right? <laughs> Like, why, why wouldn't you want drama in your life? <laughs> That's totally fine. My mic volume might be a little high. Put that down a little bit. Is that a bit better? Is that a bit better? <laughs> Load game. Do, 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 do. That one, please. Yes. Okay. What do we need? We need this. Excuse me, Cleo. Cleo Cat is here. She wants to sit in my lap, apparently. There you go. Come on. Come on. There we go. What happened last time? Um, I believe last time we almost fell off a river. Of a river, river. Becky. Becky almost fell off a roof and almost died. <laughs> Uh, but she didn't though. She didn't, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, what do we need? Do 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 do. This one maybe. Okay, we'll see how that goes. We might have to redo it. I had spicy ramen for lunch again. It's like my go-to meal on on stream days because it's easy. Oh, we didn't get any of this one. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, no. I think we're probably going to have to redo it. But Cleo? Cleo, what are you doing? No, you can't have my bickies. No, you can't have my bickies. No. So, do you hear... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> do you hear it about the fellow next door? Seems he's not an Oriental or Indian at all. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we just started. We just started. We just started. <laughs> the game just started. Can you not? <laughs> That's what Miss, what Sarah said. No, he's just sick. He's just sickly. Mm, it's good. Don't mind me, just eating biscuits. No, you can't have any, Cleo. Luckily for Becky, Cook was not enough. Not enough of it. Like this brain, like words. Ugh. <laughs> Cook was not in enough of a temper to clout her for calling Sarah Miss in her hearing. No go. Suppose she'd know all about English gentlemen living in that place. I tell you, you never get me there. Not if I had to jump off a boat and swim home. 
nothing good ever comes from India. India is awesome. It's all tigers and cobras and midges. What's the what the what it's a midge? Is it like a mosquito? That sucks the blood right out of you or spit back poison. Poison. See none of that is true. Now we're gonna do what I usually do when there's something that I uh, I don't know. We're gonna look it up. What is a midge? Images, midge. It's an insect. They resemble mosquitoes. There we go. Hold on, I'll show you. I shall show you. Display capture. Hi! Tis the inception room. Okay, yeah? There. This is it. This is a midge, apparently. Now we know. Can I get off of this please? No, I don't I don't wanna do that. <laughs> there you go. Back onto here. Back onto here. Back onto here. Yeah, <laughs> we can't see her face. <laughs> My follower goes in the way. It's a wonder the children live long enough to be shipped back here. That's mean and rude. If only Papa had let me stay there. Yeah. Anyhow, seems that fellow had gone and run himself into a hole. Though he had lost his old fortune, he did. And it drove him to wreck, thinking he was ruined forever. He weren't, of course. Still rich as anything, though it'd do him no good if he'd died of fret. Trouble was all about mines, and mines with diamonds in them. Gee, that sounds familiar. Hmm, I wonder why that sounds familiar. <laughs> no savings of mine, never goes into mi no mines. <laughs> Particular diamond ones. We all know something of them. Becky gulped and nodded. He felt as my papa felt. He was ill, just like my papa. But he did not die. Not yet. Oh, that's not very positive. Poor man. I hope he will be well. Perhaps he has a child in England as well. For the sake of that child, I would help him any way I could. Or for his own sake, and the sake of my papa, whom I could not save. <gasps> no! We have to redo it. Okay, so we need to make sure that we get at least three pain. I know it seems strange to have to to want to uh, achieve achieve pain, but uh, apparently we do. <laughs> it's all good. Load. We'll just skip to this part. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Do do do. It's just gonna be luck, really. gonna be a, a thing of luck yes we got one nope 
two. Yay! Okay, okay, we got it. Huzzah! Victory! Woo. Oh, we can't do it to week 36 anyway. <laughs> I guess we're not having an event this week. That's a bit different. Mm, biscuit. No event. I'll save this in a different slot just in case. Don't mind me eating biscuits. I know it's not professional, but uh, I'm not a professional person, so yeah. <laughs> if only you could see Cleo. She just keeps staring at my bickies. No. No, even if you reach out your paw, you still can't have any. I'm so sorry, sweets. Sarah's growing sympathy for her neighbour added a new possibility to any errands she might be sent on in the evenings. There was the chance that his curtains might not be drawn and she might be able to see inside. When that was the case, if no one was about, she would stop and take hold of the iron railings, looking into those warm rooms and wishing good thoughts to her adopted friend. Perhaps kind thoughts reach people somehow, even through windows and doors and walls. Perhaps you feel a little warm and comforted and don't know why. The man sat alone in an armchair by the fire, nearly always in a great dressing gown, and nearly always with his forehead resting in his hands as he gazed hopelessly into the fire. He always seems as if he were thinking of something that worries him. He has got his money back, so he ought not to look like that. I wonder if there is something else. I hope you will get well and happy again. Finish biscuit. Nom, nom, nom. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I am so sorry for you. I wish you had a little missus who could pet you as I used to pet Papa when he had a headache. I should like to be your little missus myself, poor man. Good night. Good night. God bless you. She would go away feeling quite comforted and a little warmer herself. Her sympathy was so strong that it seemed as if it must reach him, somehow. Cleo <laughs> is so funny. Apologize for eating. I'm hungry. Okay. <laughs> On this day, although Sarah's viewpoint through the window did not allow her to see it, the man in the house was not alone. Carmichael, I cannot believe that the wretched woman has disappeared without a trace. With the loss of her two best-paying pupils, 
in such a short time, Madame Pascal's finances were in great disarray. She apparently found it necessary to close her school entirely. It was something of a scandal in Paris, which turned out to her, be to her benefit. Hello, Gizmo! That's a nice fireplace saver. <laughs> fireplace saver. Beautiful. <laughs> Without those rumours, we might not have found the child's trail so quickly. But your sources have no idea what might have happened to her after that. Magic April. <laughs> Magic April says very doubtful. We need to ask it a question. <laughs> I don't know if he's got sound on. I will write it. <laughs> you need to <laughs> ask it a question. Don't mind me, I just want to see what these commands do. All problems. Uh, SO is shout out. The only two that are out for mods. <laughs> it clears the chat and makes it emotes only. In case of hate raids, so basically, if there's a hate raid, uh, I can type that in and it will clear the chat and make it emo only, which he can't say, he can't hear that I'm saying that, but anyone else watching this can. <laughs> Yes, stop it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stove eight. <laughs> goes. After her father's death left her unprovided for, she was then adopted, taken in by the parents of the little girl who had so recently died at that same school. The two girls had been close companions before the accident, you see. After that, a child without parents and parents without a child, it seemed the best solution all round. I'm pretty sure I've given them a completely different voice. 
<laughs> yes, yes, I am. I should make that. <laughs> so this family, who were extremely well-to-do Russians, took the child off her hands. And after that, Madame Pascal found herself in difficulty and absconded. I have not been able to contact her. Well, I think of all the dreadful things that could happen in this world to a child without protection. If this is the child you are in search of... Excuse me, Cleo. <laughs> this is get It keeps getting interrupted. We keep getting a bit interrupted, don't we? That's okay, though. It's okay, because we're still having fun. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> She would seem to be in the hands of people who can afford to take care of her. But you say if the child was the one I am in search of. You say if. We are not sure. Without Madame Pascal's confirmation of the father's identity, we cannot be certain. Still, the circumstances were curiously similar. An English officer in India had placed his motherless little girl in the, at the school. He died suddenly after losing his fortune. If you are certain that the child was left at a school in Paris, it seems most likely that she is the one. My dear fellow, I am certain of nothing. I never saw either the child or her mother. The mother was a French woman, and I had heard she wished the child to be educated in Paris. But I do not, cannot know. As if drawn by the sound of raised voices, the Lascar, whom Sarah had seen in the attic, entered, bringing a tea service with him. Mm, tea. Rest yourself, Sahib. You do no good if you are not well. He accepted a cup with a sigh. You are right as always, Ram. Still, I must find the girl. If she is alive, she is somewhere. If she is friendless and penniless, it is through my fault. <clears throat> Why was I not man enough to stand my ground when things looked black? My poor Ralph put into the scheme every penny that he owed. He trusted me, he loved me, and he died thinking I ruined him. I, Tom Carrisford, who was at Eton closer than a brother to him. What a villain he must have thought me. Ram Das rested a comforting hand on his master's frail shoulder. You were ill, uh, you were ill, Sahib. Your mind was not whole. You were not to blame. Overwhelmed with despair and half delirious with fever because I was weak. And then I ran away and collapsed in the jungle all alone. I thought I wanted to die and I know very well that I nearly did. He looked up at Car Car He looked up at Carmichael with a self-deprecating smile. It was only thanks to Ram Das that I was discovered and brought back to the hospital in time. If you had no strength of heart, Sahib, you would not have survived those weeks of fever. Mr. Carrisford reached up and clasped the other man's hand. You are too good to be. Mr. Carmichael harumphed 
gently. <laughs> oh, I missed it. I didn't get to read it all. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Yes, well, when I returned to consciousness, poor crew was dead and buried and my own mind was in a haze. I did not recall the child's existence for weeks and I have never been able to remember her name. Surely he must have spoken of her to you. <laughs> Anything he said about the school would be a clue. With nothing more to go on, it will be difficult for me to tell if we have found the right girl. Unscrupulous people might not hesitate to provide a false heiress. He used to call her by an odd pet name he had invented. He called her his little missus. But the wretched diamond mines drove everything else out of our heads. Well, don't despair. We shall find her yet. According to my Paris resources, the good-hearted Russians who left Madame Pascal's school were named Anisimov. I don't know if I pronounced that right. They most likely lived in Moscow. I will go there and see what can be learned. If I were able to travel, I would go with you. But I can only sit here wrapped in furs and stare at the fire. I am useless. You are improving. If I travel to Moscow, 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 and that is not Ralph Crew's child, I will return. By then, I am sure we will be able to move on to Paris. I'm sure you will be able to move on to Paris with me to continue the search. Have faith. Carisford shook his head. When I look into the fire, I seem to see Crew's gay young face gazing back at me waiting for me to reassure him and I cannot answer if only we <laughs> Cleo's got the zoomies <laughs> if you can hear anything it's my cat running around like a crazy thing she's got the zoomies apparently if only we had never parted or never reunited is that truly what you wish, Sahib? That you had stayed together? No, no, of course not. It would have come to the same end in time. If we had travelled to France together, it's once we planned. And yet, better by far that I had never found him again than to know that it was I who brought him to ruin. I must not fail him now, whatever the cost. Dun dun dun, I'm gonna eat this new snacky. Oh. Don't mind me, I'm just eating a little snacky. Nom 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 snacky. Nom 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 nom. Let me adjust. Oh, cramps. Leg cramps. Look at my leg cramps. We can do the same thing. It's probably fine. up a little bit just a little bit yay <laughs> <coughs> C 
Sarah sat upon her hard attic bed, looking down at her feet, which were red and throbbing. Poor feetsies. Poor footsies. Somebody help the footsies. Help them. Help them. Emily, as always, smiled absently on the proceedings. She was not sitting up quite straight today, as Sarah had bumped against her chair and not yet taken the time to write her. It has been hard to be a princess today, Emily. It has been harder than usual. It gets harder as the weather grows colder and the streets get more sloppy. When Lavinia laughed at the, my muddy skirt as I passed her in the hall, I thought of saying something horrible to her. All in a flash, and I only just stopped myself in time. You can't sneer back at people like that if you are a princess. But you have to bite your tongue to hold yourself in. I bit mine. <sighs> it's okay to express yourself sometimes. Like, stand up for yourself. You can stand up for yourself, but in this situation it's probably not the best thing, to be fair. You should probably get hit in the face by the teacher again, because the teacher's rude! Don't hit children. <laughs> don't don't hit children, okay? I know I know I do the whole laughing thing. I I don't mean to. It's because I have a hard time expressing like negative emotions. <laughs> okay. T. She drew her knees up to her chest, wrapping her arms around her legs. It was a cold afternoon, Emily. And it will be a colder night. Quite suddenly, she put her dark head down against her arms. Oh, Papa, what a long time it seems since I was your little missus. There was no answer. After a few moments, she lifted her head again, smiling as bravely as a soldier. The sun is setting, Emily. We mustn't waste time. I never guessed how short the days in England could be in winter. I must bid a good night to the sun, so that it does not decide to leave us completely. The sun might be more comfortable in India, but we need it here. With that bit of self-encouragement, she managed to climb to her feet and raise a skylight to let in the sun. What is that noise? <laughs> no sooner had she swung open the window than a bundle of fur blurred through the opening. I lightly solid solidly on Sarah's I like the <sighs> Alighting solidly on Sarah's shoulder with it, all its paws before springing off again. It's the monkey. Monkey! It was the monkey Karen. Charon. Karen. Charon. We gotta call it Karen. <laughs> oh dear, he got loose. He landed on her bed, then, and scampered across towards her pillow, then swung himself around and into the darkness beneath the bed frame, with only the long curve of his tail still in sight. <laughs> That's cute. Sarah looked quickly at the door to her room, to be sure that it was closed. Miss Minchin would be furious at such a creature running loose through her school. <laughs> she would. Oh no. <laughs> oh, the horrors. I do not want to imagine that. Nah, -uh. no thanks. I'm just going to put this down a little bit because it keeps going into the yellow and then it's then it's not high enough and then it goes into the yellow again. Silly sound. Why are sound settings so silly? <clears throat> but what was she to do with him? 
Helpless, she stuck her head back out of the skylight and found the concerned face of the Lasker there opposite. Mr. Hoop, have you seen? Oh sir, Karen has come through at my window. Should I try to catch him for you? He is hiding under my bed. I think that's what to the monkey sounds. <laughs> they tried. They tried. There was an angry chittering. She looked down to see that the monkey was now running across the floor towards the rusty grate. Ah, oh, Mr. Hib. It would not be wise. He is a good monkey and will not bite unless one pulls at his tail. But he is very difficult to catch. He flies like lightning when he wishes. He does not know you and I do not think he will allow you to catch him. Even myself he obeys only when he chooses. But he is not wicked, only playful. I believe that I might be able to coax him, if, if it is allowed that I enter. He is very polite. He must be concerned that I will think it a great liberty for a strange man to enter my rooms, as if they were truly mine. Like a grand hostess, she spread an encompassing arm. If you can cross the rooftop safely, then enter and be welcome on your quest. <laughs> okay. Be careful about letting strangers into your house. <laughs> but I love that she did that like an NPC from a video game. <laughs> I mean, she is in the game, but... Yeah. Technicalities, like... Yeah. <laughs> Karen is running from side to side of the room now. I don't think he is happy here. The rooftops of London were a treacherous train of loose, damp tiles, slanting surfaces and terrifying drops. Only the di direst of threats could ever coax Sarah out of her window. The Lascar, however, slipped across and through as easily as if he had been walking on rivers all his life. He landed on Sarah's little bed and scarcely a sound, and with scarcely a sound, and then on the floor, where he bowed a salam to her. What is a salam? Salam. Salam. <clears throat> a Muslim form of salutation consisting of a deep bow from the right palm of the forehead. Cool. Uh, a salutation signifying peace used chiefly by Muslims to make a salam or salute with a salam. Ah, very cool. We're learning new things. I appreciate that. It's a, it's a type of bow. Very good. It was the first time she had seen him so clearly. The look of him, the colour and fabric of his attire still evoked that painful half-familiarity of her lost memories. But the man himself was unusual. His bow had been as deep and polite as any Indian servant's, but he moved as lightly as a magician and stood with the strong soldiers of a str strong shoulders of a soldier i can say words his eyes and his smile were warm if enigmatic and the knife on his belt he wore with confidence oh he is like a character in a fairy tale the brave wanderer who will surpass all the witch's challenges and for that reason, he remained fixed in Sarah's mind as the Lascar. And it did not occur to her to ask his name or to provide her own. Thank you for your hospital. <laughs> Thank you for your hospitality, Mr. Hib. 
His eyes swept the room, and Sarah felt a sudden urge of shame. Sudden surge of shame. Blah, blah, blah. Everything here is dirty and ragged, including me. I am no longer fit to be called Sahib. But if he had such thoughts, he did not voice them. Now, for this little one. It was not a very long chase. The monkey prolonged it a few... A few... Just today, I just, I just can't talk today. I just can't talk today. That's fine. <laughs> It's fine. I'm not getting frustrated with myself. What are you saying? No, never. <laughs> the monkey prolonged it a few minutes, evidently for the mere fun of it. But presently, he sprang chattering onto the man's shoulder. You see, he is hard to catch when he is running. But when he wishes, he will come to a friend. He is like a child to me and my master. Many thanks, Mr. Hub, for your aid. Perhaps if we meet, if you meet again, Karen will know you as a friend. I hope so. He did not presume to stay long within her rooms, but salaamed again and made a swift exit. It gave Sarah a wistful sort of pain to recall that she the drudge whom the cook had insulted less than an hour ago had once been surrounded by people who salaamed just so whenever she went by. What a kind man. He could not help but see how shabby this room of mine is, but he still spoke to me as if I were someone important and valuable. It's because you are important and valuable, excuse me. You are, indeed you do. She walked around her room, setting Emily back in place upon her chair, and writing any other subjects disarrayed by the monkey's passage. If only we, all of us, could go back to India together. <sighs> now we still have to wait, because we can't do an event, until week 36. It's only week 34. No event. New week. Oh, it's night time. The days continued to grow colder and the nights longer. There were days on which Sarah trample, tramped through snow when she went on her errands. There were worse days when the snow melted and combined itself with mud to form slush. Slush, slush. Forbidden slush. Forbidden slushy. Nom nom nom. On such days, the study in which the Indian gentleman sat glowed with warmth and rich colour. But the little attic in Miss Minchin's was dismal beyond words. Becky sometimes crept into Sarah's room, and the two of them would huddle together under a shared blanket for warmth. If it weren't for you, miss, and your stories of the Bastille and being prisoners together, I think I should die here. Seems too real now, don't it? The missus is more like a head jailer every day she lives. I can just see them big keys you say she carries. And cooks like one of the under jailers, having relations with the army men that helped throw the fruit crackles <laughs> stop it Silly bean. Okie dokie. I just, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Tell me some more, please, miss. Tell me about the subterranean passage we've dug under the walls. I'll tell you something warmer. 
I'll tell you about the tropical forest where Karen the monkey from next door used to live. I have seen him, sometimes, looking out the window with that mournful expression. I always feel sure he is thinking about the tropical jungle where he used to swing by his tail from coconut trees. I wonder if he was captured to make a pet or if he chose to leave the trees to make friends with tall people. That is what the Lascar called himself, one of the Karen, one of Karen's tall friends. I wonder if he left a family behind who would depend on him to bring home coconuts. Ain't coconuts them big round hard ones, miss? Can a monkey eat them? They beat them against rocks to crack them, then pull them apart with their paws. It must be hard work for a small creature. Perhaps Karen grew tired of fetching food and leapt from trees to land on the shoulder of a passing Laska and became his friend so that someone else would feed him. Imagine being a monkey <laughs> with your own fur coat and friends to bring you meals. <laughs> That is Wilma, miss. But some ways, even the Bastille is sort of heating when you gets to telling about it. That is because it makes you think of something else. She wrapped the coverlet around herself until only a hint of her face could be seen in shadow. What you have to do with your mind when your body is miserable is to make it think of something else. Can you do it, miss? Sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. But when I can, I'm alright. I believe we always could if we practiced enough. Just be careful. Just gotta be careful doing that because if you do it too much you end up with disassociation. <laughs> That's not fun. <laughs> Like, yes, think about other things, but don't completely forget about reality. When things are horrible, just horrible, I think as hard as ever I can of being a princess. I say to myself, I am a princess, a fairy princess, and because I am a fairy princess, nothing in this world can truly hurt me. I could believe you was a fairy e easier I could believe me, miss. You have to practice harder, that's all. We're nothing different, you and I. Now close your eyes and think about flowers, bright and red and beautiful, nodding in the sunlight. Um, let's do one with this one as well. I'll do one of each, mostly. Almost, almost one of each. Well, we've got full fatigue. <laughs> That's a thing. On nights when Becky was kept busy too long to join Sarah in her room, the attic seemed even more desolate. When the fog hung heavy, there was no light at all to be had and Sarah was forced to beg a candle from Cook in order to see it all. Even that comfort would be snatched from her at a moment when cold droughts raced and rattled through the empty spaces. Sarah lay in the starless black, unable to sleep, unable to move. There seemed no hope to be found. 
I think Becky was right, Emily. Even Emily could not be seen in the gloom. Sarah closed her eyes. I shall die here. No, you won't. You will live and you will live amazingly. I believe. Now we drink tea. I can't bear this. I'm cold, I'm wet, I'm starving to death. I've walked a thousand miles today and they have done nothing but scold me from morning to night. Cook keeps punishing me for not being fast enough. I've had no supper again. Jeez. This is just, this is just depressing. I've tried to pretend that I have, but you aren't listening, are you, Emily? She's listening as well as a doll can listen, which isn't much, but... <laughs> I told Becky we were just the same, but all that means is that neither one of us is a princess. Maybe there aren't any princesses, not anymore, not anywhere. And we only dreamed that we were. This is all there is. Work and pain and being hungry forever and always. Now that's going to a dark place. Sarah lay there with her eyes closed and her body trembling. And she could not remember the moment when, at last, she fell asleep. No event, no event again. Hopefully when we get an event, things will be a little bit, uh, a little bit less depressing. I mean, like, wow. So far, the stream has been, uh, unfortunate. <laughs> New week again. Not long ago, Sarah Crew had been a beautiful child, but lack of food does no good to anyone, unless to a girl still in the course of growing. She was constantly cold and hungry and tired, and the stress and the pain of it gave her a face, a pinched expression. Now and then, some kind-hearted person passing her in the street glanced at her with sudden sympathy, but she did not notice. She hurried on, trying to make her mind think of something else. I have a delivery here. I will be back in a minute. Oof. Ow. It's okay. I'm alive. difficult to get into. This chair is like, it's a sofa chair. Oh, ow. I'm okay. But it's in front of the computer desk so I have to climb over the like chair arm to get into the chair. My DVD is here. Finally. Oof. Dozer, don't bark. Don't bark. You stop it. I am sorry about that, people. <laughs> uh, it might actually be a good thing that there's like nobody here at the moment. <laughs> That's all right. I've got my DVD. Nom nom nom. And we're having fun, even if it's a bit, uh, even if it's a bit quiet today. That's okay. Okay. She hurried on, trying to take her mind. <laughs> 
Trying to make her mind think of something else. I already read that. <sighs> she fought to suppose and pretend, even as the muddy water squelched through her broken shoes. Suppose I had dry clothes on. Suppose I had good shoes and a long thick coat and wool stockings and a whole umbrella. And suppose, suppose, just when I was near a baker's where they sold hot buns, I should find sixpence, which belonged to nobody. And suppose that I should go into the shop and buy six of the hottest buns and eat them all up without stopping. <sighs> Some very odd things happen in this world sometimes. She had to cross the street just when she was saying this to herself. The mud was dreadful and she almost had to wade. She picked her way as carefully as she could. Looking down at her feet she drew to choose her steps. Just as she reached the pavement she saw something sh shining in the gutter. Was it a sixpence? It was actually a piece of silver. A tiny piece trodden upon by many feet. Not quite a sixpence. But the next thing to it. A four penny piece. In one second it was in her cold little hand. Oh it's true. It is true. It is like magic. She looked up at the shops facing her. There, not a few steps away, was a baker's shop, and a cheerful woman with rosy cheeks was putting into the window a tray of delicious newly baked buns. It almost made Sarah feel faint for a few seconds. The shock and the sight of the buns and the delightful odours of warm bread floating up through the baker's cellar window. She knew she need not hesitate to use the little piece of money. It had evidently been lying in the mud for some time, quite forgotten by its owner in the stream of people passing by. And yet it did not seem quite right. It was like magic, and magic in all her fairy stories always came with a test. It was then that Sarah caught sight of the child. There were beggar children all over London. When Sarah had been wealthy, she saw them often and gave them pennies when she could. In her more recent suffering, she had rarely had time to notice these others. She was a little figure who... This... The blah 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 <laughs> This was a little figure who was not much more of a bundle of rags from which small, bare, red, muddy feet pop peeped out. Because the rags with which the, their owner was trying to cover them were not long enough. Above the rags appeared a shock head of tangled hair and a dirty face with big, hollow, hungry eyes. Sarah knew they were hungry eyes the moment she saw them, and she felt a sudden sympathy. The eyes were watching her. They expected nothing more than to be passed by, as always, and yet Sarah felt compelled to approach the owner of these eyes and speak. Uh, are you hungry? I, I, I just... Her voice was hoarse and raspy with the cold, but Sarah could understand her perfectly. When was the last time you ate? Dunno. Never got nothing today. Nowhere. I've asked and asked. No dinner. Nor yet no breakfast. Nor yet no supper. No nothing. Just to look at her made Sarah more hungry and faint. If I'm a princess, then... When they were poor and driven from their thrones, they always shared with the populace. If they met one poorer and hungrier than themselves, they always shared. 
This is one of the populace. Clutching her silver coin, Sarah went to the warmth of the baker's shop and ordered four currant buns. The sort that were one for a penny. The baker was a good-natured woman, and seeing such a cold and hungry child in front of her, slipped six buns into the paper bag, insisting that the extra two were only for make-weight. I don't know what make weight is. Let's look that up. Do 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 make weight. Make weight meaning. Uh da 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 something added on a scale in order to meet a required weight. Something added only to fill a lack, a counterweight, a counterbalance. Something for someone without much value of its own that is added so that there is correct uh, amount. Interesting. And now we know. We like to learn new things here. Tea, because my throat hurts. Sarah made her thanks and hurried from the shop so as not to get in the way of more important customers. The hot buns, even in their bag, warmed her hands. The beggar girl was still huddled up in the corner of the step. She looked right frightful in her wet and dr dirty rags and stared straight in front of her with a glazed look of suffering. Sarah took out one of the buns and with a pang set it on the child's lap. See, this is nice and hot. Eat it and you will not feel so hungry. The child stared and stared. <laughs> the child started and stared up at her as if such sudden amazing good luck almost frightened her. Then she snatched up the bun and began to cram it into her mouth with great wolfish bites. Sarah took out two more buns and set them down. Three and three. That was an even share. The sound of the child's hoarse, ravenous voice, nearly choking in delight as she gobbled her food, was awful. She is hungrier than I am. I have a place to sleep at night and Miss Minchin feeds me, sometimes. But her hand trembled as she set down the fourth bun. That left Sarah with two, one bun for each hand to keep them warm. She is starving. I am not starving. She put down the fifth bun and turned away. The little London savage was too busy to vow. It's... <laughs> I didn't realise they were talking about a person when they said savage. Okay. <laughs> Devouring to give any thanks. Even if she had ever been taught taught politeness, which she had not. Sarah found some comfort in her remaining bun. At all events, it was very hot, and it was better than nothing. She had walked along, as she walked along, she broke off small pieces and ate them slowly to make them last longer. Suppose it was a magic bun, and a few bites were as much as a whole dinner. I should be overeating if I took more than one. That is the way the, that magic works. It gives you just enough. I don't need anything more. <sighs> okay, it has been an hour. Should we keep going until we get the next event? Maybe? You know what? Sure. We're not going to do ten fires. We'll do what one. We'll do one more and then we're going to finish it for today. I mean that could
could be worse. I was hoping for some shield because we only got five, but eh, it is what it is. When the weather was bad, Sarah and the other servants were especially busy making sure that mud and ice did not evade, invade their entrance hall. While she scraped and toiled, many events took place around London of which she had no knowledge. A kindly baker moved by seeing the a kindly baker moved by seeing a cold and hungry child give away most of her buns to one even less fortunate than herself offered to take the beggar child in. Oh, oh I love that. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. A large family of children, once glimpsed in their Sunday carriage, laughed over their father's letters and promises to bring them pictures of Ms. Hicks and Droshkis when he returned from Moscow. I don't know what those are. Should we look it up? I don't feel like looking up anything else. Um, we'll do it later. <laughs> and in Miss Minchin's attic, someone stealthily opened the skylight from the outside. Ah. Oh, that's not weird. <laughs> He let himself <laughs> He let himself down through the aperture with such lightness and dexterity that he made only the slightest sound but that was enough to frighten a curious rat back into its hiding hole. Forgive me, I do not come to harm your mistress. Few would waste politeness on a rat or consider it to be a pet. But this man knew that Sarah was not as other children. He watched her in secret. I know it's not meant to be creepy and weird. But it's creepy and weird. <laughs> I know it's not meant to be. But it is. Don't watch children in secret. That's weird. <laughs> That's not okay. Seeing how she made friends of all the little things around her, the rats, the sparrows, even the sky, she greeted as if it could hear her. By the mistress of the house, she is treated like a pariah, but she has the bearing of a child who should be the blood of kings. First he went to the narrow bed. He pressed his hand upon the mattress, then lifted the covering and examined the one thin pillow. To the rusty fireplace, then examining the grate, which had not seen a fire in many days. The old table, the tattered footstool, Emily's chair, each was carefully tested and set back as it had been. At last, he took, a, he took to the walls. From his pocket he carefully withdrew a number of small sharp nails. Without the aid of a hammer he pressed them one at a time into the crumbling plaster. Ouch. <laughs> Poor thumbs. He looked around, nodded, then pulled himself up to the skylight and withdrew as swiftly and silently as he had entered, leaving no sign except for the nails. Okay, we're gonna leave it there on that very, uh, on that slightly creepy note. On that slightly creepy note, we're gonna leave it there, and next time we get to do another event. Hooray! <laughs> Finally! Because we didn't get to do one this time. Save. Oh, actually, we're new. We're going to, uh, we're gonna save it in a new spot this time, aren't we? Gonna save it in this one. Okay, this is our next one right here. <sighs> Main menu. Yes, we've saved. We can go to the main menu. We didn't even give any hat head pats this time. We didn't give any head pats. The story was very depressing. We we didn't get an event. All we got was a was a slight creepiness and a monkey running around the place. <laughs> and 
and all, all like, just everything was sad this time. <sighs> well, people who missed this stream, like, you, you didn't miss much, okay? <laughs> you didn't miss much, you're okay. <laughs> Dozer, would you stop? What is it? Give me your paw. No, not your nose. Paw. Paw. Give me your paw. Stop lifting my hand. Dozer is being cheeky. Cleo got the zoomies. I was eating biscuits. I still haven't finished my tea. And I had to go away for, uh, to, to because a, pass a, a package got delivered. At least I get my, at least I got my DVD now. <laughs> That's nice. Okie dokie. Well, we're gonna leave it at that. We shall leave. Doza, stop it. Stop it. Um, thank you to anyone who did pop in. I hope you had a good time while you were here. I hope you had all the fun. Um, yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and like. If you, if you would like to do so um and uh hopefully you're better at talking than i am <laughs> i shall put in my socials here do 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 socials and i should put in my schedule too uh streamer schedule is that what I did it as? Is that the right one? Or is it just schedule? I think it's just schedule. I'm a I'm a silly bean. Schedule. There we go. There we go. There it is. We're still working out commands. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna finish my tea. Stay lovely. Go water your plants and drink some water. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.